Good day to you all. My name is Dr. Yasser Osman and I'm going to give you the oxygen therapy lecture. Oxygen therapy. It is the use of oxygen in higher percentage than that in the atmosphere to treat acute hypoxemia. The primary goal is to elevate tissue hypoxia in order to preserve vital organ functions. When giving oxygen, one must decide on the mode of administration, its dosage and endpoint. What is meant by FiO2? If IO2 denotes the fraction of oxygen in the inspired gas, the FiO2 of air is 21% and in the oxygen cylinder is 100%. What is the normal PaO2 if IO2 is 21% and 100%? PaO2 on breathing room air is about 97 mmHg in young adults. If the FiO2 is 1, i.e. 100%, normal PaO2 should be between 500 to 600 mmHg. Physiological backgrounds. Oxygen is essential for aerobic metabolism. The site of action of oxygen is the cell mitochondria. The delivery of oxygen to cell mitochondria occurs in four phases, which is the oxygen cascade. One, inspired oxygen is transported to the alveoli by the process of breathing. Then, Oxygen in the alveoli is transported into blood stream by the process of gas exchange. Oxygenated blood is then transported to the tissue by the effect of blood flow, which is the cardiac output. Finally, diffusion of oxygen occurs between the blood stream, tissue, capillaries, which is the microcirculation, and the cell mitochondria where aerobic metabolism occur. Failure of any step of oxygen transport results in hypoxia, which is defined as an inadequate tissue oxygenation due to either inadequate blood flow, i.e. cardiac output, or low arterial oxygen content. Oxygen is carried out in the blood by two ways. First, the oxygen dissolved in the blood, or oxygen combined chemically with hemoglobin, forming oxyhemoglobin. The amount that dissolves depends on the PaO2. The arterial blood at PaO2 of 100 millimeter mercury contains about 0.3 milli oxygen per deciliter while 1 gram hemoglobin combines with 1.34 milli of oxygen. So, most oxygen in the blood is carried in combination with hemoglobin in the form of oxyhemoglobin. Goals of oxygen therapy. Hypoxemia is considered to be present when PaO2 is less than 60 millimeter mercury, i.e., the oxygen saturation is less than 90%. This is evident in the oxygen dissociation curve, denoted by the red circle. This is the pressure of oxygen, and this is the oxygen saturation. The goal of oxygen therapy is to increase the oxygen saturation more than 90%, i.e. to increase the oxygen content more than 60 millimeter mercury. Values greater than this do not significantly rise the oxygen content because of the shape of the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve. Of course, you all remember the oxygen dissociation curve and its unique shape. Furthermore, at this level of oxygenation, the symptom signs and morbidity of hypoxemia are usually 
eliminated. Indications of oxygen therapy. The most common indication of oxygen therapy is to prevent and correct arterial hypoxemia. Causes of hypoxemia. Low inspired oxygen, for example, high altitude. Hypoventilation, for example, respiratory depression by drugs. Ventilation perfusion mismatch. Intrapulmonary shunt, for example, pulmonary edema or acute respiratory distress syndrome. Impaired diffusion, which is rare. Circulatory problems, for example, stagnant hypoxia. Toxic hypoxemia, for example, carbon monoxide and cyanide poisoning. And lastly, the anemic hypoxemia, which occurred in severe anemia. Methods of oxygen therapy. There is two main methods, which is variable performance, which is the low flow system. For example, face mask, nasal cannula, nasal reservoir cannula, partial rebreathing mask, non rebreathing masks, and fixed performance, which is a high flow system. For example, the Venturi mask, the T piece, and the tracheostomy mask. But these two are a little bit tricky because in some conditions, they can act as variable performance or low flow system. So these are a little bit of tricky. Anesthesia breathing circuit and high flow nasal catheter. Low flow system or variable performance. Devices are so called because the inspired oxygen concentration, the FiO2, and the degree of rebreathing vary from patient to patient and at different times in the same patient. They provide a reservoir of oxygen for patient to inhale. They are popular methods because they are simple, comfortable to the patient, and cheap. One of the examples of the low flow system is the nasal cannula. It consists of two prongs placed one centimeter into the nares. Look at the first and second picture. It delivers a constant flow of oxygen to the pharynx, i.e. the pharynx act as the oxygen reservoir. Delivers 24 to 40% of oxygen at a flow rate 1 to 6 liter per minute. Useful in long-term oxygen therapy, effective, easy to use, well tolerated, and allows speech, eating, and drinking. Pediatric size cannula are available, but at high flow of, of oxygen, more than 5 liter per minute, it causes uncomfortable dryness. Nasal mask is the same as the nasal cannula, designed to be in a way to surround the external nose. The primary advantage is patient comfort as oxygen is not jetted into the nasal cavity as the nasal cannula. Simple face mask, most common method for oxygen therapy disposable lightweight plastic device that covers both the nose and the mouth and contains no valves or reservoirs. The face seal is never tight. Therefore, the patient receives a mixture of pure oxygen plus entrained room air. Delivers about 35 to 50% of oxygen at a flow rate between 5 to 10 milliliter per minute. Drinking, eating is difficult and long-term use is uncomfortable. Tracheostomy masks. Simple, rigid, plastic mask act in the same way as simple face mask. It delivers 
35 to 60% of oxygen at a flow rate of 10 to 15 liters per minute. The delivery they achieve is very dependent on the presence of tracheostomy tube and the inflation state of its cuff. This is why it may be considered as variable or fixed performance devices. The TP system, simple system, consists of inspiratory and expiratory limb forming the bar of the TPs. This is the inspiratory and expiratory limb, and this is the piece where it is connected to the endotracheal tube in this way. Inspiratory, expiratory limb, and the endotracheal tube. It delivers 21 to 100% of oxygen at a flow rate of 8 to 15 liter per minute. It is used with endotracheal tube or tracheostomy tube. The oxygen flow rate must be high enough to prevent rebreathing of expired gas from the expiratory limb. Masks with reservoir bag. Disposable, lightweighted, transparent plastic with reservoir bag from which the patient breathes. The reservoir bag should be kept inflated so that the patient will inhale only the gas contained in the bag. Because the mask should be fit on the face, it is not possible to feed the patient. There are two types of these masks. Partial rebreathing mask, which has no valves, and non-rebreathing masks. Delivers about 40 to 70 percent of oxygen at a flow rate of 10 to 15 liter per minute. Part of the expired tidal volume refills the bag, but most of the expired gas and carbon dioxide are eliminated from the mask through side holes by using high flow oxygen 5 to 15 liter per minute, while the non-rebreathing mask deliver about 60 to 80 percent of oxygen at a flow rate of 10 to 15 liter per minute. Have one-way valves that prevent any expired gas from returning to the reservoir back, so no rebreathing occurs. This diagram shows the difference between the partial and the non-rebreathing masks. The partial uh, rebreathing mask has no valves at all, while the non-rebreathing valves have one-way valve here and here. The partial rebreathing masks have this 100% oxygen inlet that passes to the mask and to the bag. And also the expired air in the mask will pass through the open uh, uh, part in the mask and also part of it will go into the reservoir bag. While during inspiration, the inspired gas is the mixture here of gases that goes back to the mask and some of the oxygen that goes back to the mask as well. In the non-rebreathing mask, there is valves that control this process. So the 100% oxygen goes to the face mask or fills the bag, the reservoir bag. And there is a valve that prevents expired air from going to the bag. And there is a valve that prevents the inspired air to be taken or entrapped from the atmosphere to the mast. So during inspiration, only oxygen from the reservoir bag will pass through the unidirectional valve to the mask and no air will come from the atmosphere. What about the high flow system? Air entrainment mask or Venturi mask. The oxygen Concentration is determined by the Venturi principle. What is the Venturi principle? Oxygen passing through a small orifice entrains air to a pre-detectable dilution 
the FiO2 is adjusted by changing the Venturi valve and the appropriate oxygen flow rate. They provi uh, provide a constant FiO2. Thus, they are more suitable for controlled oxygen therapy, especially in COPD patients. Rebreathing does not occur due to the high flow of gas. Thus, no valves or reservoirs are needed. A major drawback is the inability to deliver FiO2 more than 60%. These masks deliver FiO2 from 0.24 to 0.6. Now, this is the shape of the Venturi valve. This is the diagram of the Venturi valve, and the principle is that we jet oxygen from this part, which is this part, and this jet oxygen will draw air from the atmosphere through the openings these openings and this will lead to a mixture of oxygen and air in a certain percent that is given to the patient now each one of these venturi devices have a certain percent written on it and will give only this certain percent and each one is color coded with different percent the oxygen is connected to that end and is connected the other end is connected to the face mask another example of high flow system is the high flow nasal cannula it provides a relatively high FIO2 to patient with a acute hypoxemic respiratory failure. It contains a humidifier to overcome the limitation of the simple nasal cannula, as we can remember from the previous slides. Flow up to 8 liters per minute are used on infants and up to 60 liters per minute on adults and provide an oxygen percentage of up to 100 percent another mode of oxygen therapy is the hyperbaric oxygen therapy hyperbaric oxygen therapy is inhalation of oxygen at increased pressure hyperbaric and it is administered by using hyperbaric chamber the one present in the picture the principal goal of hyperbaric oxygen is to increase the concentration of dissolved oxygen in the blood and tissues for the treatment of certain disease. In this case, the PaO2 in excess of 1,500 milliliter may be produced by the inhalation of 100% oxygen at 2 to 3 atmospheric pressure. Hyperbaric oxygen is mainly used for decompression sickness for, dry, for divers and carbon monoxide poisoning, gas gangrene, gas embolism, and crushed air. What about the hazards of oxygen therapy? Ventilatory depression. It occurs in COPD patients depending on the hypoxic drive for breathing. Elimination of the hypoxic drive by administration of high FiO2 may lead to severe hypoventilation and apnea. It is important to always administer the minimum oxygen necessary to achieve the desired goal by using the venti mask or the venturi mask especially for copd patients absorption atelectasis alveoli tend to remain patent because of the presence of nitrogen remaining in it however high oxygen concentration can rapidly replace the nitrogen in the alveoli thus become 
unstable and collapse. Pulmonary oxygen toxicity. There is evidence that inhalation of high concentration of oxygen, more than 60%, for prolonged period, for example, one to two days, can produce acute lung injury. To avoid oxygen toxicity, only give oxygen when indicated. Reduce the FiO2 as low as possible. Vasoconstriction. Oxygen is known to cause constriction of the coronary, cerebral, and renal vasculature. So, oxygen should not be given to patients with acute chest pain unless there is evidence of hypoxemia. CNS toxicity seen in deep sea divers. Oxygen delivered at high pressure, more than Three atmosphere can lead to acute CNS signs and seizures. Retinopathy of premature is another form of oxygen toxicity that occurs in neonates who are exposed to high oxygen concentrations. High oxygen concentration can also cause impaired mucociliary clearance bronchopulmonary dysplasia in infants and ventilation perfusion mismatch. Fire hazards. Oxygen vigorously support combustion. Spark in an oxygen-rich environment must be avoided. Patients must not smoke cigarette when oxygen therapy is received. Note, please remove oxygen supplies or turn off when using defibrillator as a spark can occur. Thank you. I hope you like this lecture.